Um, good morning, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. Um, I can't sleep because I'm having problems with my Chromebook, and I'm gonna have to send it in for repair. And I've also had to buy a new laptop um, to use because this Chromebook's broken. So I've been a bit upset about that. So I decided, oh well, I can't sleep. So I thought, oh well, I'll make a video. So what I wanted to do with this video is I want to show you how to use a um, cat boost in a, a multi-label class imbalance problem. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use an analytics bit higher competition question about agriculture. So this is a multi-label class imbalance. And um, this is in the Analytics Bit Higher website, and then we're on my personal GitHub account. So the first thing we'll do is we'll read the problem statement. Though many of us don't appreciate much, but a farmer's job is a real test of endurance and determination. Once the seeds are sown, he works day and night to make sure that he cultivates a good harvest at the end of the season. A good harvest is ensured by several factors such as availability of water, soil fertility, protecting crops from rodents, timely use of pesticides, and other useful chemicals in nature. While a lot of these factors are difficult to control for, the amount and frequency of pesticides is something the farmer can control. Pesticides are also special because while they protect the crop with the right dosage, but if you add more than required, they may spoil the entire harvest. A high level of pesticide can deem the crop dead, unsuitable for consumption, among many outcomes. This data is based on crops harvested by various farmers at the end of the harvest season. To simplify the problem, you can assume that all other factors, like variations in farming techniques, have been controlled for. You need to determine the outcome of the harvest season, whether the crop will be healthy, alive, damaged by pesticides, or damaged for other reasons. So that's your problem statement. So here we go with the question. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to import our libraries. Now I wrote this program on Google Colab. It's a free a Jupyter Notebook and has most of the libraries already installed. So all I had to do was import them. And then what we do is we load our data set. Now I've got the data sets on my personal GitHub account. So you're more than welcome to go to my personal GitHub account and use those data sets if you don't want to use them on the analytics at BidHaya website. So we've got the train We've got the train file, and so you can see the train file. It goes all the way up to crop damage. And then we've got the test file, which shows everything, the same thing except crop damage. Then we've got the sample sub. That's what Analytics FidHiha wants to see when we submit our predictions. Now what we do is we just want to look at train info. We want to see what kind of a file it is. So you can see that the ID is an object and everything else is float. So that's good. Since the ID is an object and everything else is float, then that means that any missing values can go through an iterative imputer. So that's good. We check the same thing with the test file. We wanted to see um, what kind of file the test file was and the test file is the same as the train file except for the fact that it doesn't have a column that says crop damage. The reason why is because crop damage is your target variable. It's your, going to be your Y variable. So now we describe our train file and we describe our test file as well. And we check for any null values. So we've got some null values in number weeks used. And the same thing. We've got some null values here in the number of weeks used. So 
in theory, we could delete this um, column that says number of weeks used since there's so many null values and um, see if that improves our score. In theory, that's something we can do. Maybe I might do that. I might go through delete number of weeks used and see if my score will be um, improved. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to do a heat map. So we've done a heat map so you can look at, you can see how the uh, numeric variables relate to the independent variables. Now what we've done is we've done a group by, so you can see how many, how many, uh, you can count how many were on, um, zero how many were on one and how many were on two so we've done a disk plot of this so you can see we've got lots of zeros a few ones and even less twos so now what we're doing is we're just doing an analysis of the different variables so we're going to do estimated item counts we're going to do estimated insect counts we're going to do crop type soil type um pesticide use category so you can see on pesticide use category you don't have very many ones so obviously that's going to pose a problem you've got number of doses of wheat number of doses used a number of wheat quits so in the number of wheat quits you've got a lot that are zero and others and then you got some more others so i don't know maybe i'll go through and i think it was number of weeks quit that we had all of these missing variables missing values maybe i'll go through and i'll delete the number of wheat quits column and see if i can improve my score on this You've got the season, you've got three seasons. And now what we do is we define our X, Y, and X test. So we define a variable called ID and test ID is going to be put in that. And so your Y variable is train.crop damage. Uh, your X variable is train.drop ID crop damage axis equals one. And your test variable is test drop ID axis equals one. So now we look at our X. We've got X info. We want to see what kind of file X info is. We want to see a number of the columns. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create our pipeline. So when we create our pipeline, we create just a numeric column in this instance because there's not any categorical columns. So the numeric column is going to be put through the iterative imputer and then a standard scalar. But I think what I might do is I might go through and delete that column that's got the missing values and see if that improves my score. Now we do train test split. So we split our X value up into X train, X val, Y train, Y val with x and y random state equals one test size equals 0.1 stratify equals yes and shuffle equals true now what we do is we create our pipeline and we have to install cat boost because cat boost is not automatically installed on google colab so we do our use our cat boost classifier our preprocessor is our preprocessor which is the column transformer 
and then the classifier is cat based classifier. The loss function is multi class. Class weights are 0 0.21, 0 0.82, and 0 0.97. Iterations is 300. So it's been a bit awkward, but my it's not moving for some reason. It's not moving, but iterations is 300. And I've got it on my Google CoCloud, but it's not here. If you do a copy and paste, I'm sure that you'll probably see it. But for some reason, I can't move it. Oh, depth is 10, random state is 1, and then you fit it on X train, Y train, and then you get your score. So now what we're doing is we're putting it through cut boost on 3,000, I believe. So we go down here all the way. So we had 87.23% accuracy using cap boost with the parameters that I listed. Now it says get param, so you can see the parameters that it has in place. And then so now what we're going to do is we're going to predict on the validation set and we're going to put that in a data frame so you can compare the actual values against the um, predicted values. So now we make a chart of our y pred. So you can see we've got a 0, 1, and 2, which is that's which is very similar to um what very similar to what it was on the train file. So that's good. And then we've got um matrix a confusion matrix and you can see that the confusion matrix is completely filled out we don't have any zero values so that's good we've got our statistics so now we're going to review on x test and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a data frame called ID and crop damage. And we're going to call that submission.csv. And then what we're going to do is you'll get a file called submission.csv. And you're going to submit that to Analytics Finhaya. And when you submit it to Analytics Finhaya, you're going to get a score. And I know you can't see this, but the score that I got was 0.7851. And so that's the score I got, which is was not as high as what I got on the um, hist gradient boosted re regress classifier. So what that means is it means you have to experiment on several several models to see which model is going to give you the best value. So th the top score was ninety six, and since the score that I got was seventy eight or 79 really. So that means that I scored uh, 15 points less than the highest score. And then whenever I did hist gradient boosting classifier, I think I got about an 84. So with that model, I scored about 12 points less than the higher score. So what that does is that tells you that you need to experiment with different models to see which model is going to give you the best accuracy. But this is even though, you know, this isn't the the best accuracy, it does give you and does give you instructions on how to use cat boost classifier, which was the purpose of this video, and it's going to be the purpose of the um blog post that I make. So that concludes this presentation. You're more than welcome to look on my GitHub account to get the um, file so you can look at it if you want to follow along with me. I'm going to be writing a blog post, and when I write a blog post, I will give you the um, web address to the files and everything else. So if you want to do it, you'll have to read my blog post.
So thank you very much for watching my video and reading my blog posts that I will be making in the future. And I look forward to making more videos and more blog posts for you.